Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the concept of an I statement, which is, simply put, the idea of voicing something by starting with I think or I believe before whatever idea you're wanting to communicate. I think I statements are particularly useful when you're talking to people who have different views from yours, especially on emotionally charged topics like religion or politics. An example of an I statement would be, I think that George W. Bush's policies were bad for the economy. Now, what's interesting about I statements is that if you are sincerely voicing your own views, the I statement is always going to be literally true, even if the idea in it is not necessarily true. So suppose you don't believe that George W. Bush's policies were bad for the economy, so you don't believe the idea I'm trying to express. If I'm sharing what I really believe, then when I say, I believe that George W. Bush's policies were bad for the economy, then what I said as a whole is true, because I didn't say that they were actually bad for the economy, I said that that's what I believe. So that actually lays the groundwork for building solidarity with people who have different viewpoints. They might not necessarily agree with the idea I'm expressing, but they can at least agree with the fact that I believe that. So then if the person turns around and says, well, I don't agree with that, I think George W. Bush's policies were good for the economy then I can acknowledge that. I can say, okay, so you believe that his policies were good for the economy. We're actually able to build some solidarity. We've both gained some insight, because now I know how the person feels about the idea, and the other person knows how I feel about the idea. We also know that the idea itself is disputed. We don't have a consensus on it. The contrast I like to make with I statements is stating things as a simple fact. So, using the example I've been using, if I said George W. Bush's policies were bad for the economy, that would be stating something as a fact. I don't like doing that when it's a contentious topic, because it comes across as abrasive, and it doesn't give the person, the other person who's listening, an opportunity to connect with me as much if they disagree with it. They can definitely say, I disagree, but there's nothing that I've said that they can agree with. They can't say, hey, so you think this, or you believe this, as easily as if I prefaced it with I think or I believe. I've noticed that when I voice viewpoints as I statements, it, they're much more likely to come across in a positive and respectful way when I'm talking to people who don't hold the same viewpoints as I'm trying to express. I think that's really important for a variety of reasons. I think that it's valuable to converse with people who have different viewpoints from your own. But I also think that there are times when persuading people is a good thing. I'm not going to claim to know everything, but I think there are some things that I know that other people may be misinformed about. And similarly, other people may know things that I may be misinformed about. And I generally think that it's a good thing when people are open to listening to each other and open to changing their minds. I think that using I statements can actually make you more persuasive, because it can make people who have different viewpoints from yours more likely to listen to you, and to get to the point of actually understanding why you believe what you do. So I hope that you have found this useful, and I hope that I may have convinced you to at least consider using I statements more of the time when you're talking to people who don't believe exactly the same things that you do. Thank you!